Hi everyone, my name's Hugh, I'm here from Microchip, this is my colleague Anton Krug. Uh, so we're going to be presenting today's session on getting started with Polarfire, SOC and Renode. So today we're going to be talking about getting started with Libro SOC version 12.3 and I'll be talking about that and I'll pass things over to Anton who's going to be talking about using Renode for Polarfire SOC designs. So Libro SOC version 12.3. You can find more information and download a copy of Libro SOC version 12.3 from microsemi.com forward slash Libro SOC. You can get started and create a Polar Fire SOC project with one of our early access program licenses from today. And Libro SOC version 12.3 was released today. And just one thing to note was that Libro version 12.0 recently won Software Tool of the Year at the 2019 World Electronic Achievement Awards. So how can you actually create your project? So in Libro, you can, once you've opened it up and you've got your EAP license, you can click New and then give your project a name. So I'll call mine Polar Fire SOC. And then you can pick your part. So in the Family tab, there's now a Polar Fire SOC section. And in here, we have four parts. So we have a 1152 part, a 484 part, and we have them available for the Dash 1 and the standard speed grades. So once I pick my part, I'm going to move on and click Finish. And the first thing I'll do is I'll go into my design flow and create a smart design. So this is my FPGA-based design canvas where I can instantiate and connect up my IP blocks. So from our catalog, I can just search for MSS. And then I can select the Polar Fire SOC MSS system and drag that onto my canvas. So once I've done that, a configurator is going to open for me, and I can actually start configuring the different aspects of Polar Fire SOC. So that was very handy to do. It was very quick. So let's have a look at that configurator. The first thing that comes up is a clocks tab. So here you can set your MSS clock frequency. So the max speed for the standard part is 625 megahertz. You can select your clock source, and then you can also set your reference clock frequency. So in this case, it's 625 megahertz with a reference clock of 100 megahertz. So that's fairly standard. So this is where it actually gets interesting. So once you go into the fabric interface controllers. So we have four available. And the first one is an AXI4, which has a master and a slave that you can turn on and off. So if I turn on the AXI4 master, the um, IP block image will update for me dynamically as I turn it on. And I can see that my fix have appeared on the block. I can do that for, the, for FIC2, which is also AXI with the master and slave, and FIC3, which is just an AXI slave. Or sorry, FIC2, which is an AXI slave, and FIC3 is an APB3 master. So for each of them, I can turn them on and off, and I can see my block diagram um, update for me as I do that. The next tab you have available is the I.O. configurations. So here's where you can actually go in and start setting up your different I.O.s for your MSS. So if we have a look at that, let's just have a look at the EMMC for now. I can go in and turn on my EMMC, and I can see my circuit or my IP block image update for me dynamically on the right-hand side, and the pins for the EMMC pop up. I can turn on the additional pins and see the image update for me as well. I can do that for the USB as well if I want to, and all of the available IOs. So the EMMC, USB, SD, SDIO, the two gems, the QSPY, then SPY0, SPY1. We have five UARTs available, two I2C, two CAN, and three GPIOs. So I can go in and turn them on and off as I want. But what's very handy is as well, there's only a certain number of pins that we can put on the package. So there's an image here, or an image tab here, that'll let you go in and actually see the IO muxing that's going on underneath the hood. So let's have a look at the um, EMMC again. So if I open that up, and I'm in the image tab, I can actually see where the pins for my EMMC are going to be assigned. So if I assign one to bank four, I can see now that the image has updated for me to show that my pins have been selected and that there's no conflicts between these pins and any other pins from my IOs. If I go back to my actual block image, I can see the EMMC pins have popped up there for me. But what if I go and actually create a conflict so if we have a look at the QSPY, 
If I wanted to go and enable my QSPY, I can see that they're available on bank four and bank two. So if I enable that on bank four, <clears throat> I can see now that I've got some red pop up to say that I've two things assigned to the same pin. So that's just to let you know that there might be an issue that you need to resolve. And to fix this, it's actually quite easy. easy. If I look at the QSPY, I can scroll down and see that it's also available to be muxed into bank two. So I can go back in my configurator and just change from bank four to bank two. And I've resolved my conflict and I've actually assigned my IOs correctly. So that means, or this image tab lets you actually go in and see and configure the way that your um, pins on your Polar Fire SOC system are going to be used. So I've talked about the clocks, I've talked about the fabric, fabric interface controllers, and I've talked about the I.O. configurations. I'm not going to talk about the DDR. There's DDR in the system, and you can configure it using the DDR topology, DDR memory initialization, and DDR, mem DDR memory timing, and DDR controller tabs. There is this miscellaneous tab at the end that I'd just like to mention. So in here, I've debug trace, I've JTAG, and I've interrupt. So if we take them, actually, I'm going to go start from the bottom. So if we start from the interrupts, if I enable the fabric interrupts, I expose 64 interrupt pins to the fabric that I can actually use in my design to cause an interrupt on my um, processor subsystem. If I expose the JTAG pins to the fabric, I can connect up an, a JTAG to my actual MSS for debugging my hearts. And then as well, I have debug trace pins, which will expose ultrasoc debug trace pins to the actual fabric that I can use to debug my system. And all of them will pop up my image for me on the right hand side of my configurator. But what's really cool is then, once I've actually set everything up, I have my design that I can actually start using. So down here in the bottom left hand corner, I've configured my clocks and my resets. So I have an oscillator connected to some clock conditioning circuitry and then an initialization monitor that, that will create a reset for me that's synchronous to the clock. Then in the top left hand corner up here, I have my debug, which is a core JTAG debug, debug IP block connected into the IP debug pin or the fabric debug pins of the MSS. Then at the heart of it all, I have my Polar Fire SOC MSS. And then I have on that enabled the APB3 master. So on my APB3 master, for example, I can connect up an, an interrupt generating timer that's going to just count up for me. And I can connect that directly into my MSS subsystem into one of the fabric interrupt pins. So once I've done all of that, I can synthesize this design, I can place and route it, and I can run timing verification on it. And generating bitstream and programming um, capabilities will be added in future releases once we have hardware available, which will be Q3 of 2020. So until we have hardware available, we will be using Renode to actually bridge that gap. So I'll pass things over to Anton, who's going to be talking to you about getting started with Renode. Uh, I'm Anton Krug, and one thing I do in microchip is toolchains. We have soft console, which is our Eclipse-based ID to target bare metal targets, which are RISC-V and ARM. There is a link where you can download it. You can start using it right now. It's usually used to target real hardware devices. However, for users we do not have, which do not have silicon by hand or available, they can use Renode, which is for our rescue. Um, Renode is done by Unmicros. Um, sorry, Renode is done by Unmicro, which can simulate various platforms. It was bundled with Soft Console for a good while. However, in this current release, we have big beta feature where you can use single GDB connection, which will target all available hearts. We have few Polarfire SOC examples bundled together with Soft Console. One of them is FreeArthur's web server, which is running on top of lightweight IP stack. Um, very nice feature of Renode is that it can bridge uh, simulated network to a real hardware um, host network. Then any tools can be used like WGET, CURL, PING, Wireshark, Wireshark, or any web browsers. Together with Soft Console, we bundle a few extra tools. One of them is our own take on Hexdump, which can be used for um, 
bundling payloads to bootloaders, it can process all folders in bulk, it can mimic very primitive file system, and it can compress the content, which in case of this web server example is very handy, because on resource constrained targets, the compression is very useful. Another example we provide is Julia Fractal Renderer, which renders Julia Fractals into a frame buffer. We did it a bit of just for fun. Uh, we implemented a um, very simple video controller in our FPGA fabric model. And we took advantage of very rich Renode infrastructure, which allowed us to do it in very few lines. Uh, of course, there will be more drivers and examples coming. Uh, please attend Cyril's Jean's talk at 250 in this very same room. And if you are interested, please check out uh, Renode training videos on our, and tutorials on our website. Um, Polarify SOC comes with um, bundled models. However, if the user have custom IP or custom peripheral, they might have to model it themselves. C-sharp is usually used as the preferred way to do so, and it's very heavily object-oriented. And in long term, it's very good. However, it has a learning curve. Thanks to the strong inheritance, it allows to write a very, very little code to implement the peripherals. So small UART takes under 30 lines, video adapter takes under 200 lines. And it allows to make very versatile models which can target various combinations of the hardware. It's very rapid to answer what if questions as well. For users who do not want to write C-sharp C code, they can use existing C models or use uh, C libraries. Very simple peripherals can be written in Python or purely uh, very, very log can be used through a very later. However, however, all of them are missing on C-sharp infrastructure and they are not validating the peripheral spec as completely as the C-sharp approach. All of these do not have as polished out-of-the-box experience, but that will improve in the future. Um, CI in continuous integration and testing, it's very significant part of the process. And we in Microchip believe that the users should have a choice. So we are providing Docker containers with soft console. It is bundling the full soft console, both ARM and RISC-V toolchains, Renode and robot frameworks, which are very handy for testing. It is able to build all the permutations of all projects and configurations in one go. Doesn't require a long command lines, so it's very handy. And it can be run in headless or interactive mode. The bundled RISC-V toolchain has um, ABO, ABO actually exactly 40 architecture and ABA combinations. And if you are considering new lib and new lib C, it's actually 80. So it's very handy for experimentation. And it will work on your local Jenkins instances, or it will very nicely run on cloud as well. So Bitbucket pipelines, Travis CI, or GitHub actions, and many more. 